the Nigerian miracle. The first miracle was that Nigerian public officials agreed to work with the private sector and they also agreed to work with civil society in collective action. That was the first miracle because it has been very difficult to get that level of cooperation on an issue. And then especially on an issue that is considered to be as sensitive as the issue of corruption uh, in Nigeria. The private sector found itself in a corner. The UK Bribery Act had come into force. This is now 2011, 2012. And um, the proprietors of a lot of the shipping companies thought we're in trouble if we don't do something because of the new offense um, in that UK Bribery Act, which says failure to prevent bribery is an offense under the Act. Under the UK Bribery Act and even under um, UNCAC, the UN Convention Against Corruption, and even the OECD or, or the FCPA, Many of these facilitation payments and other things have now become um, uh, outlawed. So, uh, therefore, there was high risk for the private sector if they didn't do something. So, with a lot of contrition, they approached the Nigerian government to say, we know that we've been part of the problem uh, right from the beginning, but we'd like to be part of the solution. Can we work together towards these ends? In the early days, it took as many as 150 signatures for a vessel to come into Nigeria's waters, do its business, and leave again. And of course, with that number of touch points, you could not avoid corruption. So the first thing to do was to identify standard operating procedures and remove the overlaps between um, the operations of different agencies. The second miracle was that the government was prepared to get 14 agencies in the room and encourage them to work together to reduce corruption. The third miracle was that they actually did work together. They identified um, a lot of the areas of risk and they their own standard operating procedures. It was a great start, a great place to start. So the private sector was then able to ask, what then happens if these operating procedures are not followed? Um, and this is when a grievance reporting mechanism was agreed. But where we now hit a snag was when we then asked that, well, can we have access to this data of the reports that we've been making so that we can track um, what has been done, with what case, and so on. And that's when we hit a brick wall, that, well, it's now secret. Anything you give to government now becomes secret, and the file is marked secret. So when we couldn't get any data, and we couldn't follow up on any cases during implementation, then we had to build what we called a help desk. And we thought about it, that the process of coming into Nigeria's waters and leaving is finite. When you arrive, when you, you birth, you do your business, and then you depart. Uh, it's easy to break those into processes. So we did, and we were able to um, convince the shipmasters that, well, if they were too scared to report issues to the government, they could report to the help desk. But here's a help desk number, and from the time they come into Nigeria's waters, they're already testing the number, testing the WhatsApp number as well to see whether there would be a person to respond to them when they came into, into port. And that way, we were able to, in real time, um, go with the masters through their paces, and as soon as they hit a snag, we knew they will tell us through the help desk. The help desk will escalate to its partner, primary partner in government, which is the Nigeria Shippers Council. The Shippers Council will escalate to immigration, if it's an immigration issue, or to customs, whoever it was, 
and they would stay with the issue until it was resolved. Then we got to a stage where uh, um, the masters were able to also share the gangway log with uh, the help desk. So we knew which officials of what agencies were on board at what time. And so when there was an issue, we found that with the, with the, with the Shippers Council, the intervention could even be immediate, where there would be a phone call to the vessel and questioning to the official to see uh, about some questionable demands that were being made and so on. And that way, a lot of things got quelled before they became bigger issues.